All right, do you have an opening bit? Or are we just going to jump in, say hello? Fuck be, no, be like, I hey. don't have an opening bit, so we're just going to talk about some recent experiences. Let's go. All right. Hello, everybody, oh. and welcome back to Spiritual Successor, <laughs> a comedy video game design podcast where we take your horrible, nasty, cursed video game ideas from all over the internet and turn them into the next AAA titles. I am your host, AJ Hart. Do you think anybody Ooh. listening... Hello, I'm Blake Ray. Dude, fucking way to speed That's the run fastest the intro. I've done it. I feel so good about dude, it. Dude, I'm coming shit. into this podcast running, dude. Actually, here, hold, hold on, hold on, here. Let me try, let me try and beat your time. What, what do you think your time was? Just like, just off the off the cuff, right? It's like three, what would you say? Seconds. Four seconds? <sighs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Successor, a comedy video games I podcast inspired by comp. Oh, God, fuck, I, I did that. I did the add on thing again. I don't understand why my brain just We've defaults to it. That I've been one do- out. <laughs> I Dumpster know, that I intro. Know, I know, and I don't understand why my. We have done more episodes now dropping that part of the intro than we ever did with the original intro. <laughs> and I don't, I, I don't know why my brain fucking stays that way. Brain, d- d- bad brain. My brain never changes. Hello, Bra- everybody. Bad stinky brain. <laughs> bad stinky <laughs> brain. Bad we stinky a, yeah. smooth brain. <laughs> Come on, fucking marble shaped chrome dome in there. <laughs> Where the heck did Smooth Brain come from? Is that a Fallout like, thing? Like, if you or show up that... in, in Oregon again, I'm going to clock you. I'm going to dent that motherfucker. I'm You're going to get some grooves in there. I swear. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Wait, did, where did Smooth Brain come from? Because uh, is it a Fallout thing or well, is that Smooth Skin? I don't know. Because of the ghouls that's smooth would say that. Skin. I I I assumed that this term, like when me and all of our cool homies started saying Smooth Brain, it's because allegedly a good brain is wrinkly. Uh, I mean, yeah. I say allegedly because I don't think I've ever <laughs> met somebody with an actual smooth brain, so I really wouldn't be able to tell you whether or not it's better or worse. You know, you know what's so funny is like anytime anybody mentions like smooth brain or like the idea of a wrinkly brain or something like that, I re- I remember I didn't know that that was a concept until I watched Fooly Cooly because the whole like ending of that series was like oh no they're because they, the, the, it's a town that That's has right, a giant, they're trying to smooth out the wrinkles yeah they're smoothing out the wrinkles of all of of the town like the town can't think of anymore. the earth of the, the social earth. consciousness God, the greater dude. universe Fooly Cooly gets weird Fooly Cooly is so fucking cool dude I, I mean like, like to just to analyze it like that is about the idea that like the grown up business world tries to shut out and destroy creativity oh, oh man that's so fully coolly so good it's fucking deep dude i got it's fucking deep because it's like a <laughs> giant because it's the because the factory is like a giant steam iron you know really, really makes you think you know man i <laughs> god that does have one of my favorite shots in like all of anime though it's a remember the scene where it's like it's right after I think uh, the um, our main character like comes down with like the two guitars and fucking just like swings at that the main at the main oh, character yeah, that's dope. and then all the steam clears and you just have this fucking red halo above them and the and the one of my favorite songs ever I think I can by the pillows kicks in and they just fucking like I'm a sucker for like kiss with part with particles in the air kind of shit like like kiss in the rain or in Turbo Kid where it's raining blood and they share a kiss like that shit rules oh my god um, i think i have a special place in my heart for media and series that like the older i get the more childish it becomes and like interesting like you, like, mm-hmm. you know how like just right now you and i were like huh fully cool is pretty fucking deep huh because it's like a steam and it steams out the like well, I was, like I was that, joking. Like, that shit rocks. Like, that, I was just being ha ha <laughs> funny, being a, a bastard on on on, on like, pod, Mike. You know, but like it's <laughs> stuff that's like relatively surface level, right? Yes. Like I think Fight Club was also sort of like this. Where like the older I get, the more I love f- Fight Club, but also the more I'm like, the more cracks in Fight Club really start to show. You know, th- okay, co- I tell, I'm a, I am susceptible to peer pressure and influence of others. Um, I look at Fight Club the same way I look at Pulp Fiction. It's just I've had so many people come up to me and be like, "This is golden cinema. Like this is the standard that everything." That's should the thing. Live it's like by. they are and I'm like, good, but they, they are also service level and kind of like immature in a way. But like that, st- I still love them for it, and well, maybe it, love them more as I get older. Okay, let me let me let me ask you something very important about Fight Club because I, I I I see you. I see into you. If Tyler Durden didn't have that fucking feather jacket towards the end of the okay, movie, yeah. would, oh, you, yeah, yeah, would you not oh, like that if movie? If Tyler Durden wasn't so sexy and cool and awesome in that movie, would it be good? No. 
it absolutely would not be nearly as good. <laughs> Fuck, he did have glam in that movie, though, didn't he? God, he was just like, yes, dude. I, I want to grow up to be as stylish as Tyler Durden. <laughs> But like that's it. That's but where like, my similarities. You want you want to you want to grow up to 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 stylistically dress like him. Everything else probably best to leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> if you're new to this podcast, we take your lovely video game ideas from the internet and turn them into the next garbage heap, tr- burning trash can fire video game possible. And I am one of your hosts, Blake Rea. I don't know if you heard AJ talk, but uh, this is AJ. I am Hart. your other host, AJ Hart. Blake Rea. Wow. Let's go that ahead was, and get into the show, shall we? Was, Hit me with was, the first one. Uh, can you give me a better intro then? Let's get into the show, shall we? There's the, there's the big three for me of like the things I hate in intros. It's like one, somebody sips a fucking like bevy and is like, let's you know, just sips a bevy uh-huh. and does, doesn't bevy give an intro at all. The yeah, let's just jump right that. into it. Let's just jump right into it. And I'm like, you if you gave like thirty second more thought into that intro, you would have an infinitely yeah, better there, intro. Yeah, there is exactly one person that's allowed to use that intro, and it is Philip DeFranco. Yeah, it's um, it, but even then, it's like it's he's I, allowed I know, because part, that, that motherfucker he, invented it, though, right? He's been on the internet <laughs> yeah, for so long. Yeah, that's he's allowed true, to do it. He's earned I, his. He's earned it. I he's, think anything he's, other than that, yeah, you're to, you're what's totally. What's the third one? What's the third one that you can't? Stand? Well, those are, those are the three things. There's the sippy. There's the uh-huh. let's get into it, and then. And the fucking um uh let's let's get on with it shall we or like let's let's jump in shall we like the whole sh- like asking a question to the audience of like oh are you, obviously you've oh, watched this th- yeah, the past I 30 seconds so i'm just gonna be like shall we jump into it i don't know i find it cheesy okay yeah do, it- you, do you want me to give it another go let me try another how, intro how, that we could use for the show uh you know how about can i give you one no, uh, no, you kind of gave me the challenge. If you're all right, all right, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Give me, give, give all me right. your, give me your best intro. All right, buckle up, shit fucks. We're about to do some bad video game ideas. If you're listening to this and you hear me on the radio waves, you don't have a choice. You're locked in. And if I see you reach for that fucking pull skip button, I swear to God, I will hunt you down and I will play this podcast on my own. Fucking Beats by Dre speaker pill thingamajig. And I'm going to play it the whole time myself. And I'm going to mouth the words that I say. So don't skip it. It's unavoidable, shithead. Let's go. Blake, give me the first video game idea. Hit these dumb shits with it. Play quick before they get away. Get them. Hit them. Hit them with that submission. Play. Hit them with it. They're gonna leave. Play. Fucking do it. Come on. Okay. 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 I am not with. <laughs> Blake, they're turning away from me. I'm losing their fu- I'm losing their attention. Hey, hey, listener. Hey, fuck nut, get back here. I'm not done with the show yet. My co-host, my co-host is a little distracted, but we're gonna do some dope things here, and you're gonna love it. Oh, Watch, fuck. Blake. All right, all right. Let's go. Fuck it. Yeah, you're right. Fuck it. Let's smoke this dumb ass. <laughs> all right, this one comes to us from. <clears throat> All right, sucker. This one comes to us on uh, on Twitter. I am not witty enough for funny name at ARP ten thirty three. A game where you are a courier transporting other people's sexts. But oh god, are they they are so bad. So AJ, a- ARGs are the net are the future. Like they're gonna be they're gonna be the fucking the. <sighs> Sorry, I'm gonna come. <laughs> you feeling good? <sighs> fuck that. I, yeah, that fucked me up. I haven't laughed that hard since we made jokes about your body pillow wearing the jacket like that. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <clears throat> All right. So what I'm thinking, this is an ARG game. <laughs> it's an ARG game where you randomly get a sext and an address, and you got to actually physically deliver that text to that address. And the more the more deliveries you do in one day, the more points you make. But there has to be something. There has to be, like, maybe there are people that, <laughs> two people play there's two types of people playing this game the people intercepting the sexts um and then the people trying to deliver those sexts and i'm wondering if you could do some sort of pokemon battle thing where one where you base 
<laughs> I just I hear you, you suffering yeah. trying to get through. There's this. no, there's no, dude. There's no suffering here. Only laughs. Only love. It's all good. <laughs> I'm having. <laughs> Okay. So what okay. you're proposing is a video game where some people get to write the nastiest, weirdest, just most rowdiest things on messages. Yeah, the ron- the, ro- the They raunchiest. send it to somebody, and then the other player, are they playing Death Stranding, or are they playing Papers, Please? Oh or are they God, playing Death Crazy S- Taxi? Death Stranding. Because I think... Interesting. I'm wondering if, like, you could do a thing... One thing that's always stuck... I, I, this is going to be weird, but I'm going to take a little bit from... Uh, Fallout 76. One of my favorite mechanics of it is, is the more bastard shit you do in and like fucking with people's do- uh, property, shooting people, attacking people, you actually get a bounty put on your head. So I'm picturing, it, say you're carrying more than one sext. Do people, it's like, it's like carrying more than one box in Death Stranding. It just becomes this more harrowing it becomes more harrowing the more shit you have on you. So say you're trying to make a delivery of like you have 10, 10, 10 sexts in this area. You got to go here. You got to go there. You got to go wherever. But the more sex you have on you, the bigger your icon becomes or the more obvious like your location becomes to other people that are trying to intercept you. And uh-huh. but here's the thing, though. I, I, I'm trying to figure out like what why is it sexts? Other than like, haha, it's just a raunchy. Like he said, he got big pee pee, and you're gonna go deliver that to somebody. That's yeah. Right. Well, I'm trying to analyze uh, more so than anything is the idea of who is sending a sex through how about this? via snail how, mail. How about like, no, is no, that a thing AJ. people ever did? <clears throat> oh, dude, like y- y- those raunchy like like raunchy letters or whatever, just like writing to the people that you're smitten with. Hell yeah. Let me pitch you on something. Let me pitch you on something. So, Sexting's old as writing, really. If you think about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> so, how about this? I am sure, I have no idea, but I am sure that there is a measurement on your phone of the person you text the most or call the most. Could be your mom, uh-huh. could be your dad, could be a loved one, could be your partner, could be whatever. If somebody catches you delivering, te- uh, trying to make a sex somewhere else and they catch you and defeat you and whatever, those sexts are then sent to the person you text the most. So people can submit some of the fucking hmm. raunchiest, weirdest stuff. But if you are caught making a delivery, it is sent you from your phone to whoever instead so there's a little why is the deliverer doing this we're trying to like do the delivery in person yeah okay wait is it a delivery okay it's an arg right okay so what you're proposing is i aj hart Mm -hmm. i just type out the nastiest things yeah hit me with it Um, hit me with it just tell me tell me something roger no because then okay tell me tell me something funny haha raunchy like like i i I said hey you're pee pee big like you can give me one like I could hit you with the kind of nasty things I spit in those in those you, Snapchat no, you messages. Don't, you, you don't need to but tell if me. I did, I, yeah, you don't need no, to tell me. Did, you've Blake, you've sexted have to go... me almost every day of me knowing you, my friendship. Like that's every, not true. Every no, morning I get like like I get like I get I get a dick pic from the internet. No, no. Yeah, if I read out. If I read out what I could send, we'd have to go on the Super Podcast app, and we'd be removed from iTunes, Apple iTunes, and Spotify, and Spirit, we'd go on the Secret sp- Podcast app. Spiritual, dog spiritual catcher suck or after whatever. dark. Yeah, Spirit- we'd, we'd be on, like, Dog Catcher or whatever that podcast app is called, because that's where the real dogs fucking, go. Never fucking heard of it. I, 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 yeah, I don't think anyone uses it anymore. Uh, was it was it like one of those startups? So I, okay, go ahead. I type up the nastiest thing and I hit send. Yeah. And yeah. then much like the social media whisper, I think was the name of it, where you could just like shoot a message to your general geo location anonymously. Um, Whoa, you would then go thing? to Whoa. somebody and then let's say it went to my neighbor. Dominic, <laughs> my neighbor, my neighbor, Dominic is like, I got to get this shit to I don't know, wherever my booze at. You know what I mean? Like, ah, mm-hmm. oh, mm-hmm. I'm here. I got to get me to. Well, okay. How about this? I got to get how, my ass to the how, Midwest. How about this? How about this? that's where the this? person that I've been sexting I, uh, is let me, at. Let me pitch you on something. Let me pitch you on something. Let's, rather than looking at this as an ARG, let's look at this as a way to get, as, as not necessarily a game, but a, like a way you think you can like make money or save money. So stick with me here. 
it's not so much a problem. What if it and, was fucked? What if it was really nasty street well, pass? No, 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 no. Stick with me. Stick with me. Stick with me. Stick with me. So you know, like I, I don't know if you have to deal with it, but like limited data plan is still a very big thing. Not many people have it. There's not so much the issue of like you have to pay for minutes anymore on calling. I, I am sure there are people in the audience that are listening. Like, what the fuck are minutes? And I'm like, <laughs> um. Back back in the day, you when you made a phone back call. Back in the day, we had this thing called time. <laughs> you you could only like I, it's I forget how many minutes it was a month, but you could only talk on the phone for that many minutes a month before you got an upcharge. So what okay. I'm wondering is is if you are making these deliveries and you get like data in the process, not like data as in like sellable data, but like hey. If you make X amount of deliveries, you can get. You don't have to pay your internet bill this month. So you don't have to pay your phone bill. T-Mobile is doing this. No, 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 no. This is no. This is Samsung. This This is Samsung because it has the sexy Samsung lady as the host of it. It has to. (laughs) Okay. So Samsung's (laughs) cool, sexy mascots. Her whole new idea is we're gonna keep those cool, sexy, nasty message messages. Uh-huh. Off of the cloud by going up to the satellite and then back down to somebody's phone, and you will street pass it. You like <laughs> like passing a note to somebody. You will write up your nasty curse sins this, that this the, is like... that would make God and the devil both this, bashful. This this You'll feels type like a that more... up, and then this you feels... have to walk over and hope that your phone like detects somebody else's phone and it passes it along. Kaplink, and now your carrier messenger has it on his phone, and he can uh-huh. open it at any time. But God. That would be a federal crime, I still think. And he <laughs> now says, I need to get this to the person that this person's just really trying to put the moves on. You know so they just like? hop it in their car, like... oh, they right. drive out to Portland, they deliver the message. That, again, would make God and the devil both very bashful. And then, <laughs> because he got that, got that message delivered, street pass style, it gets to where it needs to go. And then the Samsung lady says to my neighbor that delivered that message, congrats, you get one extra G of YouTube streamable oh, without using there you your go. data plan. There you Is go. that what you're proposing? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It'd be like you are – there's that high risk, high reward aspect of it of like, all right, if somebody catches you – they're going to be sending out sexts from your phone. Guess what? That's why they call them burner phones. You just get rid of it. <laughs> oh, burner. <laughs> That's what we call it, burner. That'd be fucking, that'd be fun. All right, so there's the risk of it. And the more t- the more sexts you deliver, like, you know what this feels like? Um, remember I mean, the it movie- doesn't have to be sexts is my problem with it, right? Like, this could be anything. I could just no, write up a no message that says, hey, there's Blake, no fucking, eat my th- shorts. No, there's no fucking risk in it, And then I give that though. to the delivery boy. And the uh-huh. deliverer drives all the way down to California, and you get a fun message that just says, you "No, suck. it no, it has to it has to be raunchy sex because I don't think there's how any, would like, we control that? Uh, bro, it, it, it's Samsung. They have like a, a supercomputer that basically looks at shit and is like, "Hey, this doesn't have enough ass in in this in this phrase, so obviously it's not a sex, right?" <laughs> I hate this. Are <laughs> right, you hit me with a game then, gamer? All right, let me show you how it's done. Actually, hold on. Let me t- all right, let me t- oh, I'm sorry. Let me take that again. AJ, shut the fuck up and give me a game then, huh? No, no. Hey, Blake, Blake, we're not supposed to. No, I see what you're going for. You're trying to reach back to the bit earlier. Yeah. You and I aren't mean to each other. We're only mean to the listener. We're like on that. We're on some like warp Tour Screamo type shit. You can call the listener <laughs> whatever you want, baby. <laughs> What? I mean, there are still some rules. There are rule. There are always rules about what you can and cannot call somebody. Yeah, but you could, could catch other on that. than the normal. Yeah, hey, hey, we don't need to be like a fucking Xbox game chat right now. But I'm saying anything other than that, you can do like anything that Alice in Chains or Nine Inch Nails or maybe even like Guns and Roses would say. Well, maybe not them. They're I don't know. Old, those so are all those are all things. dudes. Those are all dudes from different generations, and I think their standards on what is okay and what is not okay to say is probably not the best baseline. If I'm being honest, yeah. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Look, look. You I mean, isn't the get secret? What I'm wait, saying. Hold, you get what I'm throwing yeah. down. No, I, you can I, throw. I, I totally... You say you can call them anything that you would call somebody. And but I, I, hate, I, would, I would never I say those things little... in real life, though. Yeah, no, it's totally a facade. Like, hey, bud. I'm sure that all the Screamo guys are really nice in person, but they still do go up on stage and call everybody a dumb motherfucker, and then we all cheer for them. So, 
<laughs> you have the pass right now. You can say whatever you want. Call them whatever you want, and they will <laughs> listen, and then I will give my submission. <laughs> I'll, I'll save it for patch notes. That's where we'll leave all the spicy stuff. Give me oh, a game, Oh, okay. And we'll make, that way, we'll make sure that they don't leave us for patch notes. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Continue. Blake Ray, this comes from No Romo at TJ underscore Garcia one pro gaming simulator. Blake, we got to get into it. We're doing a video game about how to be a real professional video gamer. Okay. Now, po- things it- you'll get points for. One. Yeah, for- yeah, first, like, gaming let's... on a schedule. That always is important. And like, is, let's be schedule? honest, that's the real power fantasy of being a professional gamer is the idea of being like, I will sit down and play video games on these times. Because the second I, AJ Hart, a real human being, put a schedule to my video gaming, it falls to part immediately. Like two months ago, Blake, you and I sat down and we said, we're going to play <laughs> Destiny every <laughs> Sunday night. And that hasn't happened once. The illusion of playing video games on a schedule, complete horseshit. It God, can't happen biggest... unless wow. you're a, a professional schedule? gamer. God, how fucking amazing would that be to actually be like, you know, you and I, we're separate Doable? states now, just oh. like us, like you and I actually gaming on like, Hey, guaranteed this day we're going to fucking hang out and be friends outside the podcast. I'll be like, fuck, that would make me so happy. It would make me so yeah, fucking excited. Yeah, I mean, excited. like, we can do it so long as we're not but scheduling we don't, a video obviously. game But we don't, obviously. No, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, you and I have scheduled out plenty of things. It's just that, like, if a game's involved, it doesn't happen. It's like, hey, you want to sit down and watch a movie over Discord? No, no problem. We got that now. Yeah, we watched Real hey, you want to hang out and play? Mo- yeah, hey, you want to hang out and play Monster Hunter? Ah, uh, shit. Well, huh? I mean, that one's that way. I've got. I hate to break it to you, but that one's just like a problem with me, man. Like, <laughs> once, my, you're, you're committed. Like, I saw, I saw your um, the amount of hours you've put into Monster Hunter. You, you did that as if it were a part time job. Like, you fucking committed. Me, See, I saw one. That's... I saw one hunt, and I was like. I kind of got everything this game has to offer. I'm happy. Uh, you just didn't get a hang. You Well, here's the problem. Did you go out and buy a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller to make it a real video game? Or are you still playing on the fucking Joy-Cons to make Bro, it I have not and played, dog shit? I have not played my Switch in dock mode probably ever. Maybe once to play Minecraft because I wanted to see how like beautiful those graphics were because Minecraft's a beautiful game. Outside that, mm, it's a handheld console for me, brother. The other way that you make money and be a pro gamer is, of course, by winning. Nobody likes a loser pro gamer. There's a reason uh-huh. why we can only ever name one fighting game player, and that's because they're the fucking winner always. It, who's who's the biggest fighting gamer? Why would you put me on the spot like this? I cannot believe I forgot their name. The furry. The furry one. The one with the dog oh, head. The blue dog. Foxy, right? Foxy. Yeah. Hey, fucked okay. up that their name. No, not it's not Foxy, is it? I think it's just. I. I. My, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it might, might not be Foxy because I'm thinking of the band Foxy Shazam for some reason, and like that just. Yeah. Yeah. Foxy sounds right. They have a fox head. It says. Is it Foxy or is it, it's like blue? Maybe blue something. I. Don't, I fuck. I don't know. Okay. So but outside that. Outside that. So actually, but actually, let's lean into that. You have to have a persona, because like. I can't name any famous gamers that I don't watch Let's Plays of. I'm talking about, like, professional, like, contestant or uh, competing gamers. I can't name any of them that don't have some very obvious personality I can pick up on. So, like, the only reason I fucking remember Fox at all is because they got a fox head to whenever they show up for games. But do they ever take their fox head off? I don't know. Sonic Fox. You were right. It is Foxy, though. Or Sonic Fox. Oh, okay. It is a fox. You're right. Sorry, I did need to Google that because I felt like a big a-hole for not remembering it after I, my big setup. How dare you re- not remember that obscure gamer? I bet you can remember Ninja off the top of your head, huh? Number three reason that you can always make sure that you're a professional gamer. Be embarrassing. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So... So we need to do a video game where the three verbs you have are win, schedule, and cringe. And those are the three things that make a professional gamer. <laughs> yeah, I'm just picturing the game opens. You have to, you design your, when you design your own character, that's also the clothing line that you sell alongside your character. And the more cringy you fucking make it. Like the farther it will carry you, but where's yeah? The thing is, the more cringy you are, the better your merch is. Like that is like the tr- the 
Like, no video gamer is without cringe. I understand this. This so is one of the is, tenets. How is tenets, this, the three pillars. How is this a game and not just, like, our merch account on Streamlabs? Where it's just a part, Hey, but this is a <laughs> simulator. This is a business sim game where you watch all uh, the knobs and the dials and the numbers grow up. So your goal is to, like, okay. you got to make sure that you're scheduling and putting your, like, time management and your time scheduling. Like, that's just one of the things. You're constantly scheduling out when your little gamer person is going to play get, what games. you game. <laughs> you, have, like, okay. you have, like, a cringe slider, and you can bring the cringe slider up or down. And, like, if you're down, like, if you're down on views, well, bring that cringe slider game? up. You're probably going to get some more money. No, it's just a just business keep... simulator. How we is, love those. Where... Okay, but the, the thing, though, with the business simulator... I don't necessarily like. Let me look at my, the most clear simulator I know, uh, farming simulator. That one is obvious to me because it's the process is grow shit, buy new shit from the profits you made, grow more shit, buy even better shit, or grow different shit. This I don't necessarily know what the gameplay loop is other than pressing button like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna release an apology video for 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 something I never, <laughs> you know, like I I don't necessarily know what the the what it is. It's like, oh, I'm gonna jump into the Smash community because that's where a lot of cringe is at. You know, I I don't necessarily know what the gameplay loop is other than like clicking on things like oh I big think button there's a there's a weekly schedule that is constantly going through and you watch this uh watch this schedule kind of pass and as time passes different things are going to pop up mm -hmm. uh so you you line up your whole schedule at the beginning of the uh phase i think a good thing to keep in reference is loop hero a game that is kind of an idle game and kind I of a management game, game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that and that's what I'm going to use as our core blueprint. Oh, so you have you have okay. a schedule. You set your schedule at the beginning of the week, and that's going to be like it's probably going to be like tile based. You'll have a game tile on the right. You'll grab that tile and you'll slot in how much time you're going to play this game so as a pro about, gamer. Hey, okay, okay, you're onto something here though. The the concept of doing loop hero. So like, so just going off of what you're saying. Our loop is our gamer's week. So like, our hey, loop is the week. Yes. Is the week. But rather than so, it be visualized in the idea of a big loop like in Loop Hero, it is just a Google calendar sheet. It's really mm -hmm. boring to look at. Sorry, that gamers well, suck. You know, I mean, honestly, you could do a thing where it is like, okay, you can you're spend looking... resources to make it look cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It does. That actually sounds way more fun because the beginning of the game is just, it's like the visual for your calendar is just like one of those shitty like fucking eraser board like thing like this $20 eraser board calendars for you can get from like a uh, uh, an office depot but as it goes oh, on man, it becomes... no fuck that if they want a whiteboard that's a microtransaction just because <laughs> whiteboards are so good dude really I literally like, i know dude them. literally I, having I, a whiteboard first, changes dude. my life i'm really? always bad at managing my shit and then i get a whiteboard in front of me and i'm like everything makes sense everything See, honestly, is more clear I, I i tried whiteboards but they're just such a pain in the ass to update because like i'm my schedule's constantly changing and i have constantly have to move things around so it's like i and i can only ever adjust the calendar when i'm in front of it that's why i think google works great for me also you get like a fucking push notification which is like i'm constantly forgetting shit like like this last friday when you and i were trying to get submissions or whatever i was at the fucking dentist but i only remembered oh shit submissions um because i got like my 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 my, my uh my butt vibrated and i was like oh dude that's right that's submission time um can't get that with a calendar so that's what i'm trying to think of like if you start off in the low tech but as the game goes on and your thing gets higher and higher tech because i'm trying to because could we okay play yeah i'll here? give you that Let's play and with then, two like, things. And then, like, as here. you increase tech, you'll be able to increase other things. What two things do you want to give it? Well, there's two things I want to give it. One, I think um, there should be a Baldur's Gate style like percentage thing with this of like you behind the scenes, you a an invisible dice is rolled. So like, hey, you have a competition today. Uh, did you miss it or did you not miss it? So that way, when you work on your stats, it'd be like, oh, you are less likely to miss things because you increased your like. 
um, oh, time, manage that's time management nice. stack. Yeah. Or like, and that could also go towards the games that you're playing because not every esports player plays the same game. Some are fighters, some are FPS people, some are RTSs. So I'm trying to figure out if you can persona style this being like, oh, I need to train in this certain thing. So like that I'm helps so you glad you brought that up. As you yeah. put different games in, like you grab the t game tile and put it in, the more time you spend on a game, the more the closer you will get to leveling up in that game thinking hey, about AJ, it think about it as what? like a part it's like a clicker idol game right like if you set your characters week up to stream rts game for like a full week you're probably going to level up once or twice in so, rts games can, can your I fighting you? games not mm -hmm. great though you can didn't I, level up you, you didn't grind you didn't stream what if what if this was actually like a if this integrated into other games somehow. So it'll be like, if you mark in this game's, you know, like there was a phase that you and I went through. It was very small, but like you turned me on to this exercise slash agenda app. But every time you were to complete something, it like leveled up your character, your RPG mm -hmm. character, and they got better armor or a better sword or, you know, more XP. They just looked cooler. And then they could go out and yeah, go it was a, it was like a Yeah, it was a to-do list app app that every time you did a to-do list item you clicked complete on the app and it would give you a little bit of experience and level up your guy it was a way to yeah. kind of gamify your to-do list and it was honestly it was really good for was, me in college it was, it was how it was i fun. stayed on top yeah. of all of my schoolwork yeah it was like it was a neat little concept um I'm wondering, More importantly, you... it was how I remembered to take care of my human body during college because <laughs> I had a, I had it set up so that if I remembered to like brush my teeth and wash my face, I would get a little bonus point. All right, see there you, you go. That's another thing we need. We need gamer professional gamers. They need that. Re you they need those reminders for hygiene, bro. It's easy to get lost in those twelve hour sessions and not and forget that like, hey, showers are yes, a thing. There, there like, will you be got a tile that you can drag onto the thing that says rest because I think your character will have a little health bar, and mm -hmm. as you stream over the week, your character's health bar will go down and down and down. If you have mm -hmm. a high cringe stat, your probably health is <laughs> your health might go down a little bit faster Wait, because AJ. you're gonna slip up how or about maybe, this how about, how about maybe this? if how the cringe this? stat is high then you oh have my god. a oh my god. higher R rng stat of things so, going really bad and you're gonna lose a good i have, chunk I, have an, I have an idea for you i have an idea for you that i'm so fucking excited about okay so you mentioned loop hero um and the concept that's a, that's a deck building game not not necessarily but it's like you can choose what you're what yeah there, you there is a deck of things to use i don't so, think it's a deck building game so much as that that's a loadout thing well it's I'm called thinking, the deck but let's be honest it's a loadout so so what if we introduced something like that to this game and that's how you plan out your week so at the beginning of the week you draw a hand but i want to take from another thing you and i were talking about like you and I were talking about like the new Dungeons and Dragons themes, you know, Magic the Gathering card set. It's really fun. It's really cool. And then I was I was I was telling you about Arkham Horror, which is another deck building game. But the unique mechanic about that is whenever you build your deck, you have to introduce, I think it's like two or three treachery cards that are built to fuck you over. So if you draw them, you have to automatically play them. So maybe if we're built if we're leaning into this cringe mechanic of this game, the higher your cringe mechanic the more like outrageous views you get so you you see an increase in numbers but the more cringe cards it introduces it introduces into your deck so it can oh, very I got it. it can very the easily fuck your, you over yeah the higher your cringe is the more you are the faster you are to just lose views like viewers and like the the big number that you're building in this game at all times will just kind of like feed away because your cringe mm -hmm. stat is there Yes, but it but be, the higher the cringe stat is, the faster that number is going to go down. But the more likely you are to get big pops of viewers because mm -hmm. you've cringed and you've gone viral, and people but it's are like, pointing it's, at you. It's it's like it's like playing Monopoly, and like you could be fucking owning it in Monopoly. You have like five hotels, you're killing it. But then you land on chance, and guess what? You draw that like pay X amount of money for every house you own. It's something yes. that like you fucking you have you you put in the time you put in the investment and the risk that comes with cringe and it fucking blows up in your face and i think that the, would be that's to me very fun 
the other stat that your character gets to build all the time is that be good at video game stat, and that would just affect how fast <laughs> you would gr- Like, that's a player stat, and that will affect how f- much experience you get in the games when your character's running through that tile. Mm. The f- <laughs> Another thing that I want to include is you. I love this idea of the deck building thing, and what I want to mm-hmm. propose to you is the idea of there is a deck of cards that you will be able to get more cards from through your grand run or as the game goes on and these cards will be opportunities and pop-ups is how Mm -hmm. i'm gonna break these down Mm pop-ups would be things like dentist or um maybe there's like complications is that what you're saying like hey yeah complications uh Mm -hmm. i hate to be the one that like turns this into a video game asset but it was only a matter of time and this is what we do here at spiritual successor (laughs) maybe there's a burnout card and it's just like if you get this card you have to take a day off you can Uh, choose what day of the week you're going to do it but you uh, have to do it yeah so So the gameplay loop is constantly you select mm -hmm. yeah you select the tiles of games that you want to schedule out and you can always choose those games those aren't going to be taken from you unless you maybe draw a card that says po- uh, complication x game under maintenance so, and it's so, out for the week so let me let me ask you something on this um and i think after this we can definitely move on to another game um i'm does this connect to other games so it'll be like you have your calendar being like hey today i'm putting in four hours of league do you actually have to play the four hours of no league i to... think this is just a maintenance game for really because like then what's like the a stink of it though well, what's now, the stink be, of it? Okay, you I, think, t- I think a game that slowly <sighs> takes over your life and you basically put in the time to be a professional gamer without like the actual results of being a professional gamer, I think that's the stank of it okay. for me. It's so like a wait, game that slowly you takes your life, you know? Are you proposing that this is some sort of Steam game or Twitch affiliate game where Twitch or Steam sits down and they says, check this out, schedule out your shit, and then go play on it? Steam yeah, set built you, an audience. in your Steam manager thing. You claimed you were going to play League for four hours. It's on your schedule. Go play League for four hours, See, dork. Yeah, bro. You 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 Otherwise, scoff, your you character scoff at won't this, but up. like people get badges for playing games, like for X amount for X amount of time, or like you if you. There's a reason they show like, hey, you've. Uh, I can look at your Switch and see that you've played Monster Hunter for 400 hours. Like there is a. I don't a think lev- I've hit 400 on Rise. I'll be honest. I'd be surprised if I even hit 180 on Rise. So. Far. Okay, I'm, t- I'm talking about Monster Hunter World because, like, let's be real. That's oh, the game. That's the game you world. fucking. Oh, that's baby numbers, bud. What? That's wait. You've done more than that. I put 400 hours on my female character before they gave me the option to change my character model, so I had Holy to make a second shit. character. Oh shit! Okay, so okay, but the, uh, now, <laughs> but, but now imagine that, but like Capcom is looking at you and b- giving you like little badges, saying, "Whoa, you've put four hundred hours into this. Good job, dude. Here's a fuck. Here's a sticker. Hey, maybe like maybe you can like put on your profile oh, shit, a that sticker. you've done." Yeah, like like a digital sticker, not a real one, because we're not. Yeah, gonna no, lose hey, money here. I, oh, I wasn't thinking about real stickers. I just got excited <laughs> about a digital sticker. Yeah, so like I, you, you. I can totally picture this being a thing, especially on Twitch, being like being rewarded for streaming, like gamifying. Hey, you're sh- I, I I'm actually I, I I don't go on street on Twitch all that often because like live content's not really for me. But I wouldn't be surprised if there was already something like that for Twitch streamers being like, hey, congrats, you stream for X amount of time to, uh, th- this week. Like, here's a here's a fucking like a, a happy face and well, some like confetti that, or something. That is just how channel t- points work, right? Like, if you watch a streamer for a number for long enough, you'll get like points from for the chat. And what this is is that, but for the streamer, yeah, the, for the streamer would creator. get points yeah, yeah, because yeah. they streamed Guilty Gear for twelve hours or whatever. Fuck, can you stream? Okay. Guilty? I mean, yeah, actually, the cinematics of Guilty Gear. Are so what do you mean? Can you cool. stream Guilty Gear? God, it's a it's fighting so game. Of course you can. I mean, but like, I, I I look at it as like one of those things. Is it a game that people enjoy watching being streamed? Yeah, it's a fighting game, dog. I mean, not all fighting games are created equal, dude. <laughs> Well, yeah, but everyone will watch a fighting game. Really? I mean, yeah, out of all the games, like, I, I do have to say, 
I you and I watched Evo last yeah, year. You're right. Like, you yeah, and I did we watched watch fucking fighting Evo, games. and it was fucking awesome. Like I was totally surprised of how much I actually enjoyed watching a fighting game. And I can't necessarily say that about anything. Like I could give a shit. I could, I couldn't give two fucks about watching COD, or I couldn't give two fucks about watching like any shooter for that matter. But like you toss a fucking fighting game in front of me where I see people like just doing these hairline dodges or ducks or jumping yeah, above people's pudges, or better yet, when people activate their ultimate and like the other person immediately just dodges to the other side of the screen and they completely dodge him like fuck i feel that i feel that fucking like weirdly enough a fucking adrenaline rush and i'm like i got it i get it i could sit in a fucking crowd and watch people play smash like that sounds awesome that sounds great <laughs> All congratulations right, other... blake you've discovered the rush of watching sports <laughs> oh shit took me <laughs> i watched baseball i watched soccer i watched hockey none of that none of that did it for me i guess i just needed to watch a uh, marvel versus capcom from night to from 2002 whatever game that was i don't know all right this one comes to us on twitter again from kayla personal pan martin at is this is it is Cytheus. this one comes to us on twitter again from kayla per this one <sighs> Fuck it, got nope, shit. Hey, fuck, nope, got hey, you know the shit. rule. Three fuck-ups fuck, and I leave fuck, it. Fuck. <laughs> All right, this one comes to us from Is It The Theus. I fucked up your name. Caleb, I apologize. I'm a horrible person. This uh, this one is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but it's Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. All right, AJ, JoJo's fans, very ravenous, very dedicated to the fandom. Now, if you put an adoptable JoJo in front of somebody, do you think they would adopt them? So you yes. go... And you go to this house. And <laughs> I don't know. No, they... I don't need to know anything else. It's an adoptable JoJo. <laughs> what question? How old he is he and how tall is he? Because if he's fourteen or above, he's six something already. Yeah. Well, there. Fuck. I used to. I used to know. It's like because they they use centimeters, and I'm a dumb American. I think it's like 195 centimeters, and they're like something pounds because every Jotaro jo Kujo the main character of part three is 16 and he's like six and a half feet tall yeah it's fucking crazy but I, I, honestly, Giorno is I believe 15 in that story <laughs> and he's also six feet tall yeah but he's way thinner like that's that's the, that I, that was always interesting to me because it was like the running gag for like parts one through four was that at the same age they were oh they they always made a point to say that they were the same height and the same weight the same like kilograms and i always thought like man that's fucking hilarious for some reason <laughs> it's like yeah be being introduced to a character they're just like man they're the same weight and height as the last jojo how weird <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> so how is this a game where you are the person hosting the foster's home for imaginary jojo or the Foster's home for jo Foster's bizarre JoJo home. I I don't know what to call it, but or is this Foster's like Foster's home are, for imaginary JoJo's? Foster's home for imaginary JoJo's. Um, <laughs> this just God. Actually, you know what? This brings up such a fucking interesting thing, though. So one thing they always dealt they dealt with in, and I think they did a whole episode dedicated to this in Foster's home for imaginary friends. Um, those that don't know the show, because I, I understand it doesn't, it did not display everywhere. It was a foster's home um, where people would send their imaginary friends that they don't have space for anymore. Like when you have an imaginary friend, they manifest and become physical. So they talk about it in one episode where people like watch something on television and then have an imaginary friend of that pre-existing character. Do you think weebs would fucking take over this foster's home if it were like a real thing? Like imagine like attack on Titan season one came out. How many fucking people imagine like a Titan or Mikasa as their or cool Aaron? best friend or as their, as their cool fucking best friend. And then they got to like send them packing to an imaginary home. Like, okay. I feel so like what you are proposing is this is within the foster's home for imaginary friends universe. They got to take it over by JoJo's. JoJo's bizarre adventures. <laughs> yeah. And now a bunch of JoJo's characters are all in the foster's home. Yeah. For it's imaginary just, friends. It's just so they are, in fact, imaginary friend JoJo's. You, you you walk in, and then you, like, look to the right, and you, you just see a fucking door that's, like, covered in blood. And you just ask, like, ask the person running the door, like, hey, uh, what's that about? Oh, that's the Dio wing. Nobody goes there. There's just a bunch of Dio's <laughs> all hanging out. That's where the imaginary Dio's live, and they suck. <laughs> so we locked them into the basement. 
fucking 50 Dio's of just a, a, a various okay, imaginary so what quality. what is this game then? If it's like, just like a house with a billion little JoJo's in it. Is, is this like... This, is this like is a this paper? Pocket Morty's? <laughs> I guess so. Sick Pocket it? Morty's reference for all four of you out there that played that <laughs> game. I certainly didn't. I just... I have a friend that did. And he th- I think he just told me it was Pokemon. I I honestly I couldn't tell you ever since the Sezron song, which is weird because it's your brother that was the that. one that told me that he played Pocket Morty, and you know ta- less I, I, of it I, than I, me. I, here's the thing: I don't talk to that guy. I don't know him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think I know shit about my brother? Um, <laughs> I love you, Trevor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so, okay, I, I, I guess that would be the way of it. So you get your pocket JoJo, and is it, I'm trying to figure, are you trying to collect them all? Like, you're trying to collect, like, hey, this is a four-star JoJo from part four. Oh, but there's a five-star out there somewhere. You know, is this a gotcha? Shit, at the this same is co- just a gotcha game, isn't it? Just a gotcha, <laughs> just a JoJo's gotcha game. Dude, is that, is that summer JoJo? <laughs> yeah, bud, this summer JoJo. Summer okay. JoJo Part Three. He's still in his schoolboy outfit because he's a student. <laughs> That's right. Fucking Jotaro went to the desert. He's like, no, I'll keep my layers on. I'm like, you're a fucking edgy, just dumb, dumb. Kakuin, his cool friend that also goes to school with him, explained why. And it's because they're wearing that still because they are both students. Why else? Yeah, why would right. they change? That's right. That feels like a translation error if I've ever heard no. one. I, ha- I have to imagine in my heart that it is the right thing. This is Kakuin. Kakuin ex- explained that they stayed in their student outfits because they are students. They don't want to be identified as adult people. <laughs> so, God, what is so the game, cool. right? Is I, it a gotcha just, game where you are trying to summon summer JoJo's and then you just I think it's, let I them think it's thrive like, I think in it's your like, little phone? Yeah, I think that I think that's it. I, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be all that complicated. It's just like, hey, do you, I have this fucking JoJo, and I'm gonna keep trying it's to Nekawatsume, pull for this. It's Nekoatsume, but for like 15 year old buff boys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just it's Nekoatsume, but everybody's just fucking yoked out of their mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's you got Neko another game Tsume, for me? Except sometimes your phone will just go, start going crazy with vibrations, and you have to open up your phone, and you see that all your JoJo's are fighting, and you have to get them to settle down. Oh, fuck. That would be fun. Like, there has to be some mini games, right? Like, is this... Could you... I'm trying to figure out... Okay, so let's look back on an imaginary... It's just um, like a Im- gotcha game where the more JoJo's you get, the more WarioWare-esque games you are forced Ooh, to play. bizarre-ass you know, games some- where it's like, yeah. Yes. It's like, dude, that's actually a great idea. Because, like, God, dude, we're getting another WarioWare game. Like, it's not WarioWare, but it is a Wario. It's WarioWare. Like, it's war- is it called WarioWare? I thought it was, like, yeah. just Wario something. Like, Wario Gold it's war- or something. It's a Wario game. Anyway, oh, yeah, fu- this game would be, like, the more JoJo's you have, the more likely you are to get, like, weird little things. Like, your phone will just start vibrating like crazy, and you'll be like, I wonder what that is. And you unlock your phone, and it's because all your JoJo's are fighting, so you have to, like, <laughs> tap the screen up. You have to tap each individual JoJo to give him a little head pat to get him to settle down. And then they're all settled, <laughs> and you're like, thank God. And so you lock your phone, and you put it away. Uh-huh, and then you kill uh-huh. one with your life. And then one day you get a little buzz buzz, and you're like, oh, weird. You grab it, and it, there's no notification. It just buzzed. And you're like, that's weird. And you put your phone away. And then a little bit later, you get in a little, another little buzz buzz, and you're like, what the heck? You open it, and it's nothing, so you put it away. And what you're, and then if one day you think, I better check on my JoJo's. And you discover that those push notifications that you were getting that didn't show anything were, in fact, Kakuin JoJo's Bizarre Adventure playing funny pranks on you because he's a little stinker. <laughs> Let me throw another. Let me throw another. I, I love that because it's just you get a PayPal fucking, notification, and shit. it's because Josuke and Okayasu from Part Four stole your money. <laughs> they went to. They just went to a restaurant. Like <laughs> they, they're constantly fucking just charging. Uh, just they're making random purchases online for yeah, you. Yeah, your your actual <laughs> card just gets charged because <laughs> the app made you because you have a Jos Josuke and an Okayasu character from the Gotcha. Let me let me pitch you on one more thing with this game. I I don't know if this is I've ever seen this, but do gotcha games or any gotcha game have permadeath in it? No. Not that what I'm aware I'm, of. What I'm wondering is is like okay, I get this fucking part 6 um or part 7 
whoever uh, Jolie, whichever part Jolene is on, I think that's part six, you get this five star fucking uh, amazing pull. But guess what? You got to account for Dio. Occasionally, Gil- Dio just kills some of your some of your gotchas. They, they, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It could be a five star, could be a one star, could just be could be nothing. Maybe they didn't manage to kill anybody. But maybe once a week, at some point in the week, if you don't react to your phone fast enough, Dio is gonna fucking ki- he's gonna just mar- okay. just yes. murder murder one of your gotchas. Here's two things that I want to put in the game. Or uh, sorry. Here's something that I want to focus on. I love the idea of JoJo's getting lost to the hands of fate. But what I would argue is, what if that's not a bad thing? Hear me out. Sometimes I play a couple of gotcha. Get I, rid of I, I, I hear got. I play gotcha games. I know what it's like. I have so many one stars and two stars, and a lot of three stars that I just don't touch because I'm only interested in using four and five stars. Yeah. What if this? And for me, those four and five stars are nothing but you know, I ignore them. But what if those one, two, three, and four stars were causing me problems? What if uh, when you what if what if my house is just getting so gosh darn crowded? So, and so what this game is is everybody wants the five stars, everybody wants the four stars, everybody wants those good ones. But the more times you try to do summoning pulls and don't get those five stars, you get you get you know. A bunch of these little nuisance three stars that are just going to cause more and more push notifications for you. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. what this game is, is you the actual gameplay loop trying is you cull? trying to figure out how to get rid of these goddamn <laughs> to shitty to poles trying to cull so that these, you can get the good stars. ones. And you're like, well, maybe I do want a couple Dio's in here to clean house oh, a little bit. So but then you, you can, have to figure okay. out how to get rid of your Dio's. Oh, and so and what Dio's the game like is, is you're constantly matching up your little dudes to fight each other. You're constantly oh just running a little JoJo stadium of matches and fights. The more oh. fights you do, the more currency you get to summon things. Okay. When you, like, you, let's say you put like <laughs> part one and part two JoJo, which are both bad poles against each other in a fight. One of them uh-huh. dies, you get one summon currency. So you can take that, but you'll need like 30 or 40 or 50 summon currency in order to get a new summon. And so the game is just a constant push and pull of th- dumping throw, garbage into each your, other to fight yeah, it throwing your, and your then going to the gotcha machine and cranking out another gotcha. <laughs> and any time that you're not playing the game, you're running the risk of the game going crazy and bothering you or uh-huh. going crazy and killing the characters you like. Oh, my God. Okay. What's and the incentive to play this game? It's a JoJo's gotcha game. JoJo's. And that's all you fucking need. <laughs> All you need for a gotcha game is an IP. How do I know this? I used to play Fire Emblem Heroes. Yeah. You still play Fate. God, that's gotcha. still play well, Fate. But then again, see, Fate's interesting to me though because it's like it's also like written really well apparently and i'm like yeah, that's no the like story's really the good eventually me. i do have to give it a caveat because the first four stories what in is, that what game is up do with suck. you playing like games that are like it got good eventually you have so much more willpower than i think i do in my actual career as a person i like reading like, it's it, well no like also like final fantasy like the concept of like having to play dozens about upon dozens of hours now final just to fantasy get to good i shit. think that i powered through because i started playing it right after i left la and i moved into my parents garage and i needed a space to hang out with friends and final oh. fantasy 14 was a social space where i could work on little projects and constantly interact oh. with my friends oh so, and I, so I get played it so so much of that game and i've realized no, that when, once things started opening up and I got vaccinated and started meeting up with people with like masks on and staying completely safe, I have not touched Final Fantasy fourteen uh, once. Well, okay, okay. So what's your so the thing that got you through this very trying time was was family. The the power nothing <laughs> the power nothing could compete with the power of family and Final Fantasy. Yep, final <laughs> the true power of Final Fantasy was in fact my family online. <laughs> <laughs> the, real, the real Final Fantasy XIV was the friends I got to hang out with along the way. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's fucking decide on a nug. So we have we have our JoJo's our rented JoJo game. Then we have our sexting delivery service game, and then we have the i the the game that you pitched, and I'm being a bad friend and forgetting the video game management. Uh, That's right. Engine. 
Okay. So but what it you... sounds like that one's not the nug because you completely forgot about it. And I'm just upset about the sexting thing because I couldn't find a way to make it interesting or not gross. So, so is it we're going to go ahead and go with our... <laughs> yeah, it's our JoJo gotcha game that is just JoJo's bizarre app. And it's so just jo- an app that will bother you or destroy itself. Oh, okay. So Foster's home for uh, for imaginary JoJo's. Or Foster, is it Fo- I, You know what's weird is thinking about this game and talking about it, I imagine it would be a lot about like how my parents and family talk about the fish tanks that they own. Because my sister has one fish that just would not stop eating other fish. And she was like, yeah, no, I love this fish. But it keeps on eating other people. And so I had to go ahead and get a second tank that was big enough for this fish and big enough for fish that are too big for this fish to eat. And so we put it in a special really big tank for only big fish. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a really good workaround. Tragically, Claire's really big fish, my dear beloved sister with her really big fish, did manage to eat a big fish that we did not expect it to be able to eat. So, but like that's how this game would work. It's like people would be like, yeah, I have to clean the fish tank again be- or the JoJo pen again because it just gets dirty and grimy so, and they're bothering me. Or they'd be like, well, JoJo killed everybody again. <laughs> So, so what I'm you're saying is there, there might there might just be a one star Dio that can just fucking eighty six your five star JoJo's once in a while, just like yeah, every now like and again. Star, for- <laughs> there's like a one star evil Polnareff, and evil Polnareff is just like busted strong and will kill everybody. God, it's so Man, wild. Hey, this to episode made no po- sense for people that didn't watch JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I just want to say I'm hey, sorry you know about that. Hey, you know what, AJ? We make these things for us. We make we, this is this is our art. We have some laughs. And, oh yeah, you know, this is it. for us. That's right. Yeah, I don't yeah, give a fu- shit. Yeah, dude. Fucking, you think these suckers listen because they like us? Nah, man. We we listen. For, they uh, that did that sense didn't. They make listen any to us sense. because we're a podcast and they need something, <laughs> and we're better than silence. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Do we have any boss fights we wanted to look at? Um, it, you want to toss a boss fight into JoJo? I don't necessarily think it works, like because it is just JoJo, right? Like it would be any. Well, yeah, but because it's a because it's a gotcha game, we can make our own OCs. Uh, like really? Oh, oh, like oh, a, a fucking doing an arc in JoJo, but it's for example. How about fun- this? Joe Pesci, and this comes from Patrick Skelly. Joe Pesci and Danny DeVito. One is an evil version of the other, but you don't know which is which. <laughs> so you have, we'll add two characters. One is super evil and one is super nice. And like we'll mark it like, watch out for the dark evil villain. And then both characters will go up. And like maybe like the tagline with that will be like, shrouded in mystery, exuding with power. Now announcing Joe Pesci, Danny DeVito. <laughs> and one of them one of them's going to kill some of those sprites in your jojo's foster god home, if but... fucking just joe pesci just shows up and turns out to be evil and is like well you've been working on how long you've been working on this gotcha three years eh, you don't need those three years anymore all of it gone get it out of my face <laughs> All right. Um, so actually, you know, we can. Is there going to be seasonal content in this? It's a gotcha game. Stop asking stupid questions. Yes, Do there's I, seasonal I've content. I've never played a gotcha. We're I've gonna never have played a, a gotcha summer before. Summer JoJo's. We're gonna have a winter, a Christmas JoJo's. We're gonna have a New Year's JoJo's. We're gonna have a <laughs> Valentine's Day JoJo's. We might get crazy on it and do an Oktoberfest JoJo's. Fucking amazing. All right. Well, I I I think that's a game, brother. That's a game, baby. Do you want to go to patch notes? <laughs> yes. And let's more go importantly, if we're going over there, I need you to make sure that our audience comes along. So you said you were gonna right, do fuck, it, so suckers, I need you to do shut. it. Hey. Hey, suckers. I know you're in a car or you're doing something else. Fuck that. Stop what you're doing. Come with us. Come other room. We're going to we're going uh, to the fucking no, more patch spice. notes area. No, we got try some that news again. for you. More. More. What? You wanna you more wanna go energy. you wanna go more? Meaner. Yes, they're like they're not gonna. They're like ah, he called me sucker. No, I want you to startle them, make them feel like they have to come to patch notes. Let's see it. All right, shit four. Let's go into the other room. We got some patch notes. We got some news. You need to listen the fuck up. Let's come on. Let's go. Come on.
You just felt like a mean dad that time. I know. Can I, get it one I don't more feel time? good. I don't feel good when I do that. I, yeah, I know. Have you ever funny. been to a? Have you ever been to a like a screamo concert or like Warped Tour? Do I do I look like a dude who's gone to Warped Tour? I know I wear Doc Martens, but no, that is not. I've never been to Warped Tour. Motherfucker, you've listened to the you listened to the Flaming Lips. Yes, you seem like the person. I've listened that would know to this one thing. song by the Flaming Lips. I've listened to Yoshimi at fights the giant robots like maybe once. Like, that song's good, but is that even... Yeah, that's Flaming Lips. Outside that, no. Like, I I maybe... Does... does uh, What's that one band? Fall Out Boy? Do they play Warped Tour? I listen to Fall, Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy would be mean to their audience. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> they count. Hey, everybody, welcome to, welcome to Patch Notes. We just wanted to say thank you very much for listening. And if you're feeling quite generous, we... You know... Actually, you know what? No, fuck it. Hey, we haven't gotten an iTunes review in, in, in fuck all time, and it's been a while. Get in yeah. there. Fuck it, catch up. Catch up with us, dude. What the fuck you doing? Give us an iTunes review. Now. We need it. <laughs> uh, you know what? You got there, and I'm really proud of you. Thank you, Blake, for having that energy. <laughs> and with that, I think we can close the show. I got everything I needed out of you. Okay. As Bye always, every- our intro and outro music is Cheap Shot by Anna Monaguchi, an excellent song from an excellent <laughs> band for an excellent game. I have been one of your hosts, AJ Hart. And I have been your other host, Blake Rea. I'm sorry. This has been Spiritual I, Successor. I know. It's, it's, I, I feel so bad. Like, I, you guys are great. You guys are so fucking kind to us and nice. And I, me even saying anything remotely mean is just, I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel good at all. <laughs> Bye, everybody. (laughs) This has been Spiritual Successor, and these are cool games that should not be made.